welcome to Ned Talks. Today we have a guest on the platform from CNS Labs, Nigel Abraham. Nigel is the scientific and laboratory director for Omega Diagnostics and a specialist in immunology and allergy. And today, Nigel will be talking about the role of IgG food intolerance testing as a tool for use with migraine headaches. So welcome, Nigel, to the Ned Talks platform. We are looking at two recent papers on this topic, I think. So I'll just hand over to Nigel and he'll run us through the, some of the latest science. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, yes, as we said, um, I would like to present today a couple of uh, recent papers looking at the role food sensitivity plays in migraine headache. Now, just looking at the numbers, um, a recent evaluation suggested that maybe 23% of adults suffer from migraine in some form or other. Um, but this condition is often underdiagnosed and certainly undertreated, both from the public perspective and also from the professional understanding is often quite poor. This leads to a large number of patients visiting a &E and being referred to outpatient neurology services that in many cases is probably an unnecessary treatment. And of course, the number of admissions to hospitals in England uh, has increased by 14% over the last five years. And this has an enormous economic cost to our already strained healthcare services. So we can see immediately that when it comes to migraine, we're talking about something that affects a great deal of people, is often poorly treated and has a huge economic cost. So of the 10 million or so people who live with migraines in the UK, often getting the correct treatment can be challenging. And so any additional diagnostic tools that can help in that treatment is going to be uh, potentially beneficial. And the balance of the literature does suggest that IgG-based food sensitivities are linked to migraine headaches. Patients frequently report that their headache occurs, may be triggered by the consumption of various foods, but it's often very difficult to know exactly what those foods are. But recently, there was a literature review looking at the role of IgG, food-specific antibodies and food sensitivities uh, in relation to migraine headaches. And they pointed out that there have been several hypotheses over the years proposed. So we have the, the amine hypothesis, where we're looking at vasoactive amines in our food, or even IgE-mediated allergies. But the truth is, is that the literature has never really been able to validate either of these hypotheses. But more recently, uh, a mechanism has been proposed which evaluates the link between IgG-mediated food sensitivity. And what we're saying here is the exact pathophysiology probably still needs to be elucidated, but it, it has been established that IgG-mediated um, antibodies play uh, along with that of the generation of certain cytokines results in this inflammatory response, which then is believed to play a role in migraine attacks. And there is growing evidence to indicate the role between inflammation and migraine headaches. But traditionally, the evidence supporting the link between food sensitivities and um, migraine has not always been of the highest quality. We've often had to rely on exclusion diets, which by their very nature uh, often give um, low quality and often difficult to interpret results. But it is possible that IgG may be a useful biomarker to identify foods linked to increased inflammatory response in the body which in turn may be linked to migraine headaches. And this paper recently published last year was a, a very good paper exploring that hypothesis. We know that cytokines do play an important role in the inflammatory process and the mediation of pain sensation, which is associated with migraine patients. And there are a number of studies have shown that pro-inflammatory states of chronic migraine and Alkisonic migraine compared to healthy controls. And it is possible to show that increased pro inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF alpha and IL 6, are probable indicators of this type of low grade chronic inflammation, and that this is caused by IgG mediated food sensitivity. So, this paper set out to evaluate this and it looked at um, 
patients who suffered from headache, patients who had GI symptoms, anxiety, depression, and sleep disorders, as well as certain skin reactions. And I think this was because when we are looking at the inflammatory process as a, a mediator of migraine, it is not going to be specific to migraine. It's going to also influence a lot of other inflammatory related conditions. And what they also did was to look at the levels of inflammatory cytokines in relation to these symptoms. And of course, the main focus of the paper was to quantify the IgG levels uh, and relate that to the severity of headache and these other comorbidities. And the results were very encouraging. What they found in the positive IgG group is that they were more likely to have longer time elapsed since diagnosis, which represents this is, uh, this food sensitivities is often a long-term process. More frequent and severe migraines, a higher risk of developing anxiety and other gastrointestinal symptoms, and they did indeed have higher levels of cytokines such as IL-6 and TNF-alpha. And interestingly, when we look at subgroups and analyze the IgG a bit more, those who had the most IgG positives to the most foods, in other words, generally had worse conditions as well. So the conclusion as well, migraine patients with positive food IgG antibodies have worse migraine, worse anxiety, and increased gastrointestinal symptoms. And the inflammatory cytokines at least partially mediate the causal pathway between food-specific antibodies, migraine, and other migraine-associated conditions. So in conclusion, we can look at this review. And the review found that IgG food sensitivity testing may prove to be a beneficial tool to healthcare practitioners, especially for patients experiencing migraine headache symptoms. I think I would put a, a caveat to that and just say, uh, in, at least in certain types of migraine. Now, they also, in the review, also said that, you know, we can do elimination diets, we can do a trial and error process, but this is very time consuming and very challenging and difficult to get reliable results from. So utilizing IgG food sensitivity testing to create customizable dietary recommendations for patients may allow healthcare providers to treat migraine headache without the use of medications as a cost effective alternative. So in conclusion, uh, is it time to look at the role food sensitivity or IgG guided food exclusion food diets can play in the management of migraine and migraine symptoms, then the literature seems to, current literature is suggesting that yes, that is something that we really should now be considering. Fantastic, Nigel. Super, super interesting and, and really great to get a balanced review of the current state of the literature. Um, just to let everybody who's listening know that these papers are on the Nutrition Evidence Database, so we encourage you to read further um, into this topic so that you can see how the science is developing. And if you have any questions in relation to today's presentation, then you can contact Nigel and his colleagues at CNS Labs. So thank you very much for listening to this NED talk brought to you by the Nutrition Evidence Editorial Board team in partnership with BANT and special thanks to our guest, Nigel Abraham from CNS Labs.